Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be covering subunit 1.4, which is the composition of mixtures. So let's get started. So the first thing, this is very, very general. That the first thing we need to talk about is just, you know, what is the definition of matter? So anything occupying space, anything that has volume and also has mass. And typically we break the big heading of matter into two categories, pure substances and mixtures. So what's in that category of pure substances? Just two things, compounds and elements. Okay, elements of course you find on your periodic table, compounds would be chemical combinations of elements. Compounds, of course, are things that can only be broken down by chemical processes. You can't separate a compound into its individual elements through physical means. It has to be through chemical reactions. So pure substances is one branch under matter. The other branch is mixtures. And you'll remember back from Chem 1, that there are two types, homogeneous and heterogeneous, okay? Homogeneous, another term that you'll see that, that means the same thing as a homogeneous mixture is the term solution, okay? That is typically something dissolved in something else. And that's a, that's a whole other unit that we'll cover later in the year, um, solution chemistry. But in general, homogeneous mixtures mean things that are evenly mixed, uniform composition. A heterogeneous would be still a physical mixture of things, but it's not evenly mixed, that there is variable composition. So one part of the mixture is gonna have a different um, composition than another part of it, all right? So what sorts of questions do we see about mixtures on the AP exam? Well, they're, they're what we call mixture analysis questions, and I'm going to go through two types with you. And here is an example of the first type. Okay, so it says we have a 3.6 gram sample of a mixture of lithium fluoride and potassium fluoride. Okay, so let me just pause there for a second. So each one of those is a compound. Lithium fluoride is a pure substance, a compound. Potassium fluoride is also a compound. When you physically mix them together, now it's a mixture. But just to be clear, lithium fluoride and potassium fluoride, those two compounds are not chemically bonded to one another. They're just physically mixed together. So this mixture is found to contain 0.18 grams of the pure element lithium. What percentage of the sample is made up of lithium fluoride? Okay, so this is a common kind of question that you'd see on the AP exam. And I'm gonna start with this 0.18 grams of lithium. And they don't, want to know what percentage of the sample is made up of lithium, they want to know what percent is made up of the whole compound lithium fluoride. So I've got to somehow get to grams of lithium fluoride. As we saw two lessons ago, we've always got to go through moles. So we're going to just take this step by step. So the first thing I'm going to do is get out of grams of lithium and get to moles of lithium. That number 6.9 that's coming off the periodic table. I'm not ready to get to grams of lithium fluoride yet. Still have to go through moles. Okay, now this step right here is a step that some of you will have done in Chem 1 and others of you may not. You can go mole to mole from a whole compound to an element or an element to a whole compound, what you want to ask yourself in this situation is which thing is bigger, 
the element or the compound. Of course, the compound is bigger, so I'm always going to put a 1 next to the whole compound. Now I'm going to ask you how many lithiums are in lithium fluoride. Well, just one. So these are in a one-to-one -one ratio. If, however, and this is ridiculous, but just pretend with me, let's say there was a subscript of a two right there, like Li2F, then I'd have a two right there, okay? But I don't, so I'm gonna erase that. Okay, now remember the objective here is to get to grams of lithium fluoride, and now I can do that. Just extend that line just a little bit. This is the molar mass off the periodic table. And I'm going to plug all that in, multiply across the top, divide by any number on the bottom, and I get this. Okay, so that is the mass of lithium fluoride in this mixture. Well, I know that the total mass of the whole mixture is 3.6 grams, and they want to know what percent of the mixture is made up of lithium fluoride. So just like any other percentage, part over whole times 100. And I'm going to round this to two significant figures since both numbers printed in the original problem have two. So this mixture is only 19% lithium fluoride, okay, which means all of the rest of it must be made up of potassium fluoride. Okay, so that's just one uh, type of problem that you could see. You know, you're given a mixture of something and you have to determine the percentage of one part of that mixture. Here's another part, another, excuse me, another type of problem you might see. And I'm going to work this one out as well. I'm going to work it out on a blank screen. So let's look at it. It says, you have a solid that you know is mostly sodium chloride. You suspect, however, that it may contain some sodium iodide, potassium chloride, or maybe lithium chloride. So you suspect that it's got some kind of impurity in it. When you analyze the sample, you see that it contains 72% chlorine by mass. Is the sample pure sodium chloride? If not, what else does it likely have in it? All right, well, what I would suggest that we do first is figure out what percent chlorine pure sodium chloride has. So that way we can answer the question, is the sample pure NaCl? If we get 72%, then we can say, yeah, this sample is pure, it has no, um, nothing contaminating it. So let me get to a blank screen here. And we're gonna look at sodium chloride, okay? And we're gonna determine the percent of chlorine within sodium chloride. So there's one chlorine within NaCl over the total molar mass, one sodium plus one chlorine, that has a molar mass of 58.5. And let's see what this gives us. Okay. So if this sample was pure sodium chloride, when we run an analysis, we should have gotten 61% chlorine. But let's come back to the problem. We didn't. It's got 72% chlorine. So right off the bat, is the sample pure NaCl? No, it's not. It's got something else in there. And here's the clue, guys. 
if you let's come back here, it should be 61%, but it's some percentage higher. So whatever is being mixed in there must have a chlorine percentage higher than the 61%. Because if it's averaging out to 72%, then there must be something in there that has a chlorine percentage higher that's moving that average above 61. So let's look at our, our candidates here. All right, let's come back here. So here was one of the other possibilities of a contaminant. Okay, now, this is not a trick question. What percent of chlorine, what percent of this compound is made of chlorine? Zero. Sodium iodide does not have any chlorine in it. So guys, if you think about it, if you were to you know, average these two numbers, it's gonna be a percentage between zero and 61. When I know that the percentage was 72, okay? It's a higher number than 61. So NAI is out. That's not my contaminant. Let's try this one. Now this does have chlorine in it, okay? So it could be the contaminant. Let's see what its percentage of chlorine is. So KCL also only has one chlorine, 35.5. That's the molar mass of chlorine off the periodic table. Here's the molar mass of the entire compound. And when I calculate it, I get this. Okay, now let's ask ourselves, could could KCL be the contaminant? No, it couldn't. Because again, look at those two numbers. If I were to average them in some way, it's gonna end up somewhere between 48 and 61%. That's not where the problem said that we were. So process of elimination, I know that lithium chloride must be my answer, but I just wanna prove it to you. Here's the percent of chlorine within lithium chloride. And it comes out to be 84%. Okay, now think about it. If we were not necessarily an even average, but if we averaged those two percentages, we would get a number somewhere between 61 and 84, because it may not be a perfectly 50-50 split between these two compounds. Does that match the data that we were given? Yeah. So I know this isn't it. Lithium chloride must be my contaminant because it has a percent of chlorine higher than the pure NaCl, and that's what the data was showing us. So those are the two types of mixture problems that you will typically see. Um, sometimes they're in free response, sometimes they're in multiple choice. Um, it just depends, but those are the two most common to show up on the AP exam. So I hope you have learned something and I look forward to seeing you all next time.